goodbye. It's me. Storage Podcast. Hello, everyone. Wow. Got this new microphone thing, and guess what? It's getting in the way. I feel like it's getting in the way of my face. (laughs) Hello, welcome to Storage. I am the host of this thing, of this podcast that's called Storage. And I just want to give you guys a quick weather update. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Storage Podcast, where it is 81 degrees here. 81 degrees, and we got 65% humidity, which I think will be going up soon because I closed the door. Gonna be getting stuffy, folks. Last podcast I did with Molly Daisy, and thanks for, I need to check my lipstick. Thanks for listening to that podcast and watching it. Um, I jokingly said, if it gets too hot this summer, I'm going to shut shut it down and that was a joke many people in the comments were like you can't shut down I'm not going to I'm gonna brave through the elements I sat here in the cold and I'll sit here in the hot the only thing I won't sit through is if there is some sort of tornadic activity if there's a tornado I will not record a podcast if there is a tsunami I will not record a podcast just because it wouldn't be possible. I would not, I'd be probably not alive. But it is hot in here. (laughs) Got a lot of good feedback on the Molly Daisy episode, and I appreciate that. Uh, Molly is truly one of a kind, and having her here was quite a delight. And I know I made a lot of lesbian jokes Uh, at her expense. (laughs) But that's what we do as friends. We make jokes about other people, I guess. One of these days, someone, I don't know, maybe Harry Potter, will invent a microphone that doesn't need a stand and it'll just hover exactly where I need it. So what have y'all been up to in the last week? I have been still getting my room together. If you don't know, I moved from the upstairs to a very, from a very small bedroom to the downstairs, which is a very nice uh, little apartment, self-sufficient apartment, which means I don't ever have to leave the house again, which I love. (laughs) Got myself a microwave, a fridge, a coffee maker, and essentially if I didn't want to leave ever again, I wouldn't have to. I'd have to leave to wash clothing, but I think I have enough clothing to last me a couple of months. At least I have enough shirts. As far as pants, I'm going to have to rewear those. But shirts, I'm good for months. There is a wash machine upstairs, but I don't really feel like, you know, going up and down those steps because they're brutal. They're brutal on my body. What the hell is this? I'm going to play some voicemails today. Why don't we just go ahead and... Oh, I got two pairs of the same glasses right here. Isn't that nice? One pair. And two pairs. That's for X... Whoa, that one's dirty. Look how dirty those are. Extra reinforcement. Let's just start off with a nice voicemail, and that'll get us, get us warmed up and rolling here. Okay, I picked the dirtiest pair. Just as dirty. All righty. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It was already signed in and it signed me out. That's a prob. Something went wrong, it said. <laughs> cool. All righty. I know that I had one on here from Ronald and I don't see it here. These are some of these are all the way from. All right, this is Lydia from Lydia! Tampa. Whoa! Storage! 
Libby, I love you so much. This is Lydia from Tampa. And I know you have said that, I swear you said that you're not that big into horror movies, but you were so good on Baby Oopsie. Your Clarice impression is hilarious. Kills me every time. And when you're talking about Pet Cemetery, you know your stuff. I want to hang out with you, and I want to talk horror movies. And speaking of, what is your favorite horror movie? Mine is The Howling. It's awesome. Not enough people know it. D. Wallace is the shit. I love you. Me and my wife met you in Tampa at the show. You were so good. I love you. Lydia from Tampa. Um, Yeah, I'm not a big horror movie fan. And I appreciate you saying that I was good in uh, Baby Oopsie. That was, um, there wasn't a lot of spooky, st- I mean, there was spooky stuff on set, but not enough that freaked me out. Um, as far as Pet Cemetery, I just, I've always loved that movie. And I think because I watched it in eighth grade and I just really, really got into it for some reason. The idea that you could bury a cat and then the cat would come back, but come back evil (laughs) ah something really cool about that like let's say annie passed away and i took her to a pet cemetery and the the older gentleman that happened to be my neighbor was like you can't go there whoops the soil is sour don't bury anything there and i'm like well i miss annie and i go up there and bury annie and next thing i know three days later annie comes back but she's stinking to high heaven stinking stinking bad and she starts you know next thing you know i bury a a child in there i don't have a child but this is what happened in the movie then the child comes back and starts killing people what and i said it before and i say it again how did these people allow an infant child to kill them he's an infant he was two feet tall You're telling me you can't overtake a little child? (laughs) What's wrong with you? Even I could do it, and I'm weak. My arms are not strong. I believe that was a Stephen King film. Stephen King, this goes out to you. It's not plausible that a diabolical child that came back from the dead because he was buried in a pet cemetery could kill people because he's little. All they had to do was just give him a little... And the kid would fall over. I think it would be more plausible uh, that the cat started killing people. Because you're not expecting the cat to to jump on the back of your head and start, you know, killing you. (sighs) I'd say my favorite spooky movie uh, probably is going to be Nightmare on Elm Street, the first one. Because when I saw it in the theater, it scared the living me it scared me because there was a lot of jump scares and then I wasn't prepared for that and I wasn't prepared prepared for the fact that when you go to sleep then Freddy's going to show up in your dreams and he's not just you know he's not just you know doing whatever he's killing you in your dreams my take on scary movies is life is scary enough i don't want to see it on on a tv program yesterday officer daniels myself and the actor that has played the last two jasons sat down and did a mukbang with us and nicest guy uh but he had the mask with him and it spooked me spooked me out and i know it's not real Am I drunk? I know it's not real. But it still scares me. Thanks for that call. Thanks for that call, Lydia. All right. Hey, Livy. It's Jeremy Dolce. Um, I just watched you get shocked by Tweety Bird. And I wanted to call and say, if you ever do need to plug in the alarm clock... All you need to do is get some black electrical tape. Well, I don't, there was probably other colors. Um, and you just like wrap where the gaps are and then you can like plug it in and this shouldn't happen again. But I would double check, you know, there's probably some more 
splits in that wire. Um, yeah, I'm a part-time electrician. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anyways, I'm just so proud of you. Um, I love Storage Podcast. And congrats on another sold-out tour, Icon. Sorry I missed this tour, but next tour, hopefully I'll see you there. So keep 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 living, as Paris Hilton says. Um. Jeremy Dolce, everyone. Jeremy Dolce has been a, a fan, friend uh, since the beginning. Always very supportive. Always sharing stuff, sharing links that, that I've put out. Very kind. But also, come to find out, part-time electrician. <laughs> and if Jeremy Dolce came to my house and said, hey, I'm going to fix your uh, Tweety Bird clock and I'm going to charge you $28 an hour, and then Jeremy Dolce puts black electrical tape around it, I'm going to call the Better Business Bureau because I could have done that. The BBB. Have you ever called the BBB on any businesses? I have. I called on a um, business that I encountered in my 20s. I went and got some fake glamour shots I could not afford a a real glamour shot so I got some fake glamour shots that were taken I believe it was like in a JC Penney or a Sears or something like that they set up in a store it wasn't really affiliated with those stores I don't remember which one it was I think it was JC Penney's fake fake um flake fake glamour shot so I get there they start on the makeup. That was like the big thing. Like they do your makeup, you do your hair, and you put these really cool clothes on like you were a Hollywood star. The hair, I believe they started on the hair first. They put it in hot rollers. And I've never had my hair in hot rollers. Um, and my hair was shorter. So that to me was was immediately a red flag. I'm like, okay, here we go. Then they did the makeup, which made me look like I um, was at my own funeral. Just waxy, waxy, thick, waxy looking makeup, just very thick. Like I was going to be on stage that night and the lights were going to drown me out. That's how thick they did it. They take the hair rollers out and my hair looked horrible. It looked ridiculous. And I was like, whoa. So they, you know, start taking your picture. They gave me like a leather jacket. And they and they always make you um, pose like this with your collar up. And another one was a red feather boa that they, you know, they give you like a tube top. And that way you can just change quickly. Well, the, I had the tube top on and a feather, red feather boa. And I was like looking very seductive as a young 20-year-old. And when I got these pictures back, I was horrified. And I couldn't get any anybody on the phone to say, hey, I want a refund because I looked terrible. <laughs> and it was one of these businesses that, you know, they'd set up one day and they were gone the next. And I was, this was my first, one of my first experiences with a business that I felt had done me wrong and And I called Better Business Bureau, and I'm like, these people won't give me my money back. I paid all this money, and I was young, right? I was was busy trying to pay off my my Bally's uh, contract that I had gotten suckered into. Is that what it was called, Bally's? Vic Tanny. It was Vic Tanny. I've talked about this on Slop City. I couldn't afford... Uh, the money that I spent on these pictures and then the pictures look ugh. I couldn't give it to my boyfriend. I think that's why I did it. I did it because I wanted to get some really nice pictures to get to my boyfriend at the time. Boyfriend at the time was Dan. Um, And I was like, I can't give these to him because he's not with a 70-year-old lady. And that's how old I looked. I looked 70. I actually look older in the pictures then than I do now. That's how, and these were taken, um, you know, 20 some odd years ago. If I remember, I'll throw one of those pictures up. I've shared them before, but man, what in the world? So yeah, I called the Better Business Bureau on them, did nothing, I never got my money back, and 
Luckily, I still have those pictures because when I look back at them now, I'm like, wow, these are incredible. When I when I press that button, I want you to understand that I'm actually just whispering. I'm saying fucking, but I'm going. That's what make the, that that's to me. That's what make this bit so funny is because I'm not actually beeping anything. I'm just whispering. I'm just. You know what? I wonder if it's actually. It's actually muting my. I'm looking at the little thing and it looks like it might be muting my microphone. We'll see. We'll see, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll see if anything happens here. We're up to uh, still at 81 degrees. Come on, man. I need a producer. I need a producer. All right. Looks like somebody sent me a message on June 10th with a picture with a, what is this? A YouTube video. I don't, I can't play that because of copyrights, but I don't know who's sending that. I have to look at that later. Hey, Libby. Jamie here. Hope you're having a wonderful night. Love you, honeys. Bye. Were, is your name really Tammy, or were you just saying, hey, honeys, Tammy here, like Tammy says? Didn't announce yourself. How am I supposed to know who you are? All righty, got another voicemail here. Hi, this is Allie. Um, I'm listening to episode 17, and you're talking about the Bean song. So I've never heard your, your version, but the one I always grew up listening to from my dad was Beans, Beans. They make you fart. No, shit. Beans, beans are good for your heart. The more you eat, the more you fart. The more you fart, the better you feel. Let's eat beans for every meal. Yeah, I have to say it fast so I can't say it right, I guess. But yeah, um, I didn't know there were so many different versions of the bean song. Um, love the podcast and love you and the girl. Bye. That's Allie coming, calling in with her version of the, of the bean song. That was episode 17, apparently, and I'm glad she told me because I didn't know. Many different variations of beans, beans, the magical fruit. The more you eat, the more you poot, the better you feel. So let's eat beans for every meal. That's the one I grew up with. Don't get mad at me. If you're mad at it, guys, don't know what to tell you. Don't know what to tell you. I am, uh, I am been busy uh playing zelda the new zelda tears of the kingdom um when i start playing a, a video game i become obsessed with it to the point of nothing else in my life matters and i'm trying to balance that i will play for a couple hours i've been setting a timer that when the timer goes off i go outside and i walk up the driveway and there's kind of um there's an incline, so it's kind of a workout. So I'm like, okay, if I'm going to sit here and play, I'm going to get out and I'm going to walk up the driveway. So I'll walk up the driveway. Sometimes I'll push the trash up the driveway, which is also a workout, and then I'll walk back down. Now, doing it one time is becoming, I'm not going to say easy, but it's easier than the first times that I did it. So I'm going to maybe have to set a timer and go maybe two times up the driveway. Because since tour, since uh, being on tour and being on tour has caused me to lose so much strength from my legs. And I could always depend on a lot of strength in my arms. And now I'm losing a lot of strength in my arms. So I'm trying to get up, get motivated. I ordered, um, I don't know what they're called. It's one of those boxes that people will do CrossFit and they'll jump up on it. Well, I'm not going to do that. I have used those boxes in the past at my old gym um, to do squats from, to do planks on, so that I don't have to do a plank on the floor like this because I'll never get up. So it's, you know, partial inclined plank. Um, and then I put a call out to my old trainer in St. Louis and said, hey, I would like to pay you 
to create for me three at home workouts, three separate ones, and one on the road workout. Because I need to get strength again. It's getting spooky. Paired with the lipedema and being in, you know, pain, I think if I get my strength back up, the the pain will be, whew, the pain will subside a little bit. Should I open this door? Because it is getting hot. It still says 80, 81 degrees, but I don't believe it. I believe it to be 90 or 100. Going to be having a call with my trainer, and he can uh, tell me what he can do. But, yeah, we did... At, at the old gym, it was called Prescription Fitness. Loved it. Would go four to five times a week. Didn't go with the intention of losing weight. Um, went there just because um, this was before I was diagnosed with lipedema. And I'm like, my body hurts. I need to get it moving. So the same kind of thing's going on now. I'm not setting out to lose weight. I'm setting out to become stronger and just, um, just get moving. Because you feel good when you're moving. Most times, even though I'm in constant agonizing pain. (laughs) If I'm able to do a 20-25 workout where I'm doing squats, I'm doing uh, kettlebell lifts, I'm doing planks, I'm doing, uh, you know, just different exercises. Don't know the names of all of them. The one where you lift the dumbbell up and you're like snatching and you freaking throw it in the air. Yeah, you're going to feel good because you're like, am I the Incredible Hulk? (laughs) Am I Superman? Because I just picked up that freaking dumbbell and threw it in the ceiling. Because he'd say, pretend you're going to throw it in the ceiling. And I would. Whoa. And I probably could create uh, my own workout. But what I'm wanting is him to create one where it's like, oh, today we're going to do legs, arms, back. Tomorrow you're going to do this, that, the other thing. This day you're going to work on your heart. So... Because I'm not a professional nutritionist or exercise guy. He is. His name's Brandon Glore. And he would modify stuff for us. Because it wasn't a regular gym. It was a gym for people that were larger. It was a gym for people that had mobility issues and couldn't go to a regular gym. Or it was, you know, for anybody that just didn't feel comfortable going to a regular gym, walking in and not knowing what to do with the stuff. He would set up little um, stations and he'd explain each station and then if the person was able to do it the regular way they do it if they needed a little modification he would say here here's a box or here sit and do this or just he really really changed my life as far as working out um, goes and I'm sad that there's not a prescription fitness in Nashville I would do anything to be able to have that gym here because I loved it I loved the people there I loved going there I loved the sense of accomplishment I had after I finished a workout Um, I loved noticing that I was getting stronger that I could lift things longer that I could be in a plank longer that I could row faster that made me feel really happy And I'm hoping to be able to start doing that in my basement. It won't be the same by myself. Maybe Maggie will do it with me because Maggie's going to be living with me. Um, Definitely need something to get this body going. But what my point was is I'm obsessively playing Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, but also trying to uh, say, hey, Let's not just sit for two hours. If you're going to sit for two hours and play a game, you're also going to go walk up the freaking driveway that's like walking up a mountain, bro. And are you going to get out of breath? Yeah. (laughs) But just imagine if I was walking up that driveway and still smoking. It would have been twice as hard. Whew. I have also been um, obsessing over... These people that are um, inside of a submersive. I always want to call it a submarine, but it's not a submarine. It's a submersive. And um, it is horrifying. And I am checking the news constantly because I want these people to be found. And I can't imagine what they're going through. Probably horror. Hopefully they're still alive. In my head, 
I keep putting this into the universe because I want them to still be alive. I want them to have some sort of miraculous rescue mission happen where everyone's saved and everything's fine and then they can make a TV movie out of it. Because you know they will. 100%. I can't I can't even imagine what those people are going through. I don't think they have much um, time left because there is a limited number of oxygen. And, of course, all the, all the information is coming out like, oh, this guy doesn't know what he was doing. They're using a PlayStation controller to control this thing. He has no business going that far down in the ocean. It's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's why I don't trust people who say they're experts. For instance, uh, the people uh, that have like um, alligator farms, for instance, don't trust those people. That's a wild animal that'll eat you in a second. Don't tell me you're an an alligator expert. Next thing you know, uh, my child's been eaten by an alligator. Don't have a child. Just speaking hypothetically. Just don't try. I don't try. I wouldn't trust someone that told me they're going to take me down to the bottom of the ocean to see Titanic. I would not trust them. And also, the size of the window that they're looking at is this big. Five people have to look through that one little window? Huh? You'd think for 250K, you'd have your own little freaking window. We did go in that submarine in Cancun. Um, well, when we were in Mexico, and it was spooky. But we didn't go as far as they went for the Titanic. I think we went a couple hundred feet. And again, you can argue and say, ah, you know, there's might be mishaps with that. Well, I checked. There weren't any, any kind of accidents on that particular craft ever. So I felt kind of safe. Still felt very claustrophobic, but felt, Felt like I would um, not lose my life at the end of the day. Whew. Shit. <sighs> Next week, I will be traveling to Denver to see Harold. And we have all kind of different stuff planned to do. Uh, we're trying to find another hotel or Airbnb that's cool to to do uh for our new show called checking in if you haven't seen it check it out it's a show where me and harold go to different hotels or airbnbs and if harold's not available i'll be going by myself and doing it one of the airbnbs i found was really cool it had games in there like video games it had a stripper pole i went to you know check out and um $120 $120 cleaning fee. And I'm like, that's ridiculous. Even as a tax write-off, because it would be because I'm making a video there. Even as a tax write-off, the price that it was going to be was ridiculous. And I'm like, <laughs> no. Why do they do that? And besides that, anytime I've ever been in an Airbnb, they make you clean up before you leave anyway. Put the towels in the washer take the sheets off make sure the dishes are clean okay i'm gonna do all that but i'm not paying you 120 dollars cleanup fee damn give me the 120 dollars i'll clean it Uh uh-oh nick from dayton hey libby it's nick from dayton So I was wondering, while you guys were on tour, did you see anything haunted? You were in all those old theaters, and I just, you know, I'm wondering, half of them had to have been really haunted. So do you have any fun ghost stories from the tour? Thanks, Nick. Um, We went to so many old theaters that were over 100 years old, and people would often say, like, oh, there's... This one's haunted. You, if you hear at night, you'll see a spooky lady walking around going, woo. Never did I ever see a spooky lady. Or uh, there's a lot of children. There's a lot of ghosts that are children, you know, and they walk around going, hello, can you spare a cup of tea for me? I'm an orphan and I'm hungry. 
I've never seen any of those in real life. I would love to see a little kid ghost. Nothing would make me happier. Hello, I'm a little ghost. I was born in 1846. I think I'm on the other side. Can you help me get to the other side? You're like, bro, I, you're a kid. <laughs> Have you ever seen the movie Pet Cemetery? That kid got shit done. That kid got <laughs> done. All, always all kinds of ghosts, but never ghosts that I saw. To answer your question, I never had a, a ghostly experience in any of those theaters. Never once saw the Phantom of the Opera. And that's probably because he lives under the theater. In a, in a sewer, sewer. He doesn't live in a sewer. He lives in a, you know, underground chamber. No, he lives in the sewer system. There's no way to sugarcoat it. The Phantom of the Opera lives in a sewer. And there's no amount of vocal uh, vocal skills or 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 half mask or big giant organs you know these kind of organs that are going to make up for the fact that the phantom of the opera lives in a sewer yeah can he can he do spooky things like make a chandelier fall down and and possibly kill people in a theater yes lives in a sewer does he have a special boat that he uses to take uh, people that he's kidnapped from the theater to his little sewer home? Yes. Still a sewer. He's probably riding in what's called gray water. Gray water, if you're not familiar with it, it's not pee, it's not poop. It's um, a mixture of sewage, from what I understand. When you have a one of those vacation rental, you know, RVs, and they'll say, you can put the gray water in here. That means, um, I think it means sewage water. I don't know why they'd say it's gray, because it's usually brown. (laughs) Um, Weird. That's weird that they do that. Yeah, the Phantom of the Opera. For whatever reason, chose the sewer. He could have chosen... One of the green rooms to live in. One of the dressing rooms. He wanted more privacy, so he went below the theater. And that's why you hear, you know, you hear the lady, uh, Christine, singing because she he kidnapped her and took her down in the sewer. People think this is a love story. It's not a love story. It's a story about kidnapping. Phantom of the Opera kidnapped Christine took her down to a sewer and forced her to sing. Telling her, oh, you're my angel of music. Okay, bro, take me back upstairs. Tired of being in a stinky sewer. Then one time he brought her down there. She looks over at a mannequin and there's a freaking wedding dress on it. That he had because he wanted to marry her. Love that I keep kicking that. The Phantom of the Opera did a lot of things, okay? And some might say, you know, he was a killer. He was a a narcissist. He was a manipulator. The bottom line is the Phantom of the Opera wanted to be loved just like everyone else. Did he go about it in the wrong way? Yeah. He didn't necessarily do it the right way. But really, Phantom of the Opera wanted connection, wanted a girlfriend or wife, and wanted people to love him. That's all he wanted. And really, that's all any of us want. How can we... How can we say what he wanted was wrong? We can't. But what we can say is, look, Phantom of the Opera. You can't kill people with a chandelier. You can't uh, kidnap uh, a woman and take her into a sewer. You can't threaten people. If you don't do what I say, 
something beyond your imagination will occur. That was his big thing. He, you know, big booming voice. If my demands are not met, something beyond your imagination will occur. Okay, like what, bro? He means he's going to start people. That's what he means. Something beyond your imagination. Yeah, just say it. You're going to start killing people. All this for love. All of it, every last bit of it, because he wanted to find love. And Christine, Christine fell for him. And I believe ultimately, had he not kidnapped her, killed people, um, called her a, you know, several names, one of which being, um, you little lying Pandora, you little demon. He called her names. Had he not done that particular route, I think he could have found love because he is ultimately one of the greatest tenors to exist. He's a great tenor. Great organ player. Plays some really cool songs, you know. Spooky songs. But he went about it the wrong way. That's all I got to say about that. So check out Phantom of the Opera. One of my favorites. Great songs. Story kind of <laughs> kind of freaks you out, you know, because kidnapping. Um, yeah, cool story. And then we got Raul. <laughs> Raul is like the guy that's after Christine loves her. They were friends when they were kids. And uh, he's like, what's all this? Stuff you're talking about the phantom. What are you talking about? And she's like, there's this guy and he's saying like, he's my dad and it's like confusing and and he wants me to sing. And the guy's like, wait a minute, hold up. What are you talking about, Christine? And, you know, she tries to explain it and then the phantom wants to kick Raul's ass and Raul wants to kick the phantom's ass and it's like they want to battle over Christine. And really all Christine wants to do is, is sing and perform in the th- in the theater. So that's a lesson in the human condition, I guess. What does the human condition mean? I don't know. I just hear people say that. Like, oh, this was a lesson in the human condition. The Phantom of the Opera killed people and took them to his sewer. And possibly did things that weren't allowed in a sewer in the sewer, yeah. Have you seen the phantom? He's got one side of his face. It's kind of messed up and melted and burnt. I think he got hurt as a child, yeah. Cause really he has some trauma. Trauma, trauma. He's passing his trauma on is what he's doing. Something happened to him. As a child, maybe his dad got mad at him and put a cigarette on his, out on his face, and that's why he has to wear the half mask. I don't know. But you have to stop the cycle, Phantom of the Opera. You can't continue the chaos. All right? I get it. You're different. You look different. Guess what? I waddle when I walk. I look different. I look ridiculous. But you know what? I'm not out here killing people and saying, something beyond your imagination will occur. I'm sorry that something happened to you, Phantom. I'm sorry something happened to your face. But you can't go around killing people and kidnapping and taking them to your your sewer. You can't. Jeez. I mean, lots of times I'll be feeling sorry for myself. Why why do my legs have to be like this? Why did I get bag legs? Why do I have lipidine? Why can't I walk uh, five miles? But then I'm like, you know what? I'm grateful that I am able to walk, even waddle, (laughs) you know, because some people don't don't have that. That's what I got to say about that. I keep meaning to get a new song on here so I don't have to use this one over and over. Oh, yeah. 
time for a new song. Whoa, yeah, baby. Oh, I got a new storage sign and um, didn't order the right size. It didn't even open the box yet because I was like, this is tiny. It's like this big. It's, <laughs> I don't, I don't know how to measure. Don't know how to measure apparently. All right. What else is going on here? Live in Nashville, Tennessee. Going to the dentist tomorrow. Everybody knows I love the dentist. Love when a stranger's hands are in my mouth. Pro poking, prodding, and um, causing me a pain. Going for a cleaning. And every time I go, they'll say, do you want me to take your plate out? Meaning the bottom denture. And then I'm like, Ugh. How embarrassing, even though he's a dentist and he knows that I have a denture. Just take it out, bro. Then they take it out. And then when they're done, they put it back in. And that's even more embarrassing. Having another adult put your denture in for you. <laughs> embarrassing. It's embarrassing. <laughs> oh, shoot. All righty, guys. I'm going to get out of here. Uh, only been in here for about 45 minutes. Sometimes it's an hour. Sometimes it's 40 minutes. Sometimes it's one minute. Um, I'm going to get out of here. I got some stuff to do. I need to go to the Walmart to get a fly swatter because I have three flies flying around in my room. And... Um, To say that I would like to take them to my sewer, <laughs> actually, they would probably, <laughs> they're flies. They would like being in a sewer, so I wouldn't do that. I'm going to take them and something beyond your imagination. I can't say imagination. Something beyond your imagination will occur. That's what I'm going to tell those three flies. But I'm going to buy a fly swatter. Haven't bought a fly swatter ever. I think every fly swatter I've ever had, I've, it's been handed down or I moved into a place and there was already a fly swatter there. Do people actually buy fly swatters? If you've actually gone to a store and bought a fly swatter, please sound off in the comments because every fly swatter I've had has been given to me or I've inherited it or it just appears. It appears. Hmm. That's interesting. Do they even sell them in stores? What's the deal with fly swatters, you guys? Who am I, Jerry Seinfeld? What's the deal with fly... What What really is the deal with fly swatters? Because I've never bought one, but I've always had one. When's the last time you bought a fly swatter? I've never bought one, but I've always had one. Until this moment when I really need one. Weird. Huh. Huh. I'll have to look into this further. This is interesting. Never bought a fly swatter, but always had a fly swatter. And how gross is it? You use this thing to smash a bug. And oftentimes, you don't put it in the trash. You just smash it, and you're just like, okay. And you just let it fall on the floor or... I mean, that's how I do it. I don't know how other people do it. I've even had fly swatters um, put up and get it out for the season, and there is a fly still on there from last season, hard and flat. I'm actually I'm embarrassed to go buy a fly swatter. I'm not embarrassed to get toilet paper and people know when they see you with toilet paper that you're going to take that toilet paper, wad it up or fold it, whichever is your preference. And then you're going to use it to wipe your ass. That's not embarrassing. But what's embarrassing is I'm going to be walking through Walmart with a fly swatter. People will know that I have flies flying around in my room for some unknown reason. It can't be a good sign. Because with flies, there's filth. And with filth, there's maggots. And with maggots, there's decay. Am I the phantom of the opera living in a sewer? Is what I'm saying. 
could be. <laughs> wow, got flies in my room. Yeah, three flies. And they just, I'll be sitting there naked, as I always am, and a fly will land on my shoulder, and I'll go like this, and it'll fly away. And it'll do it approximately four to 500 times. And it makes me uh, want to um, lose my mind. So I'm constantly going. And the little fly's like, ha, 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 gotcha. Gotcha, b-. Me. This is me all day. I can't imagine a fly swatter being any more than 97 cents at Walmart. They have such strange prices there. I imagine that the price of a fly swatter would be 97 cents. Where it would a fly swatter be? With the outdoor stuff? With with um, household stuff? I don't know. Hi, can you tell me where the fly swatters are? Oh, you got flies in your house? You want a fly swatter? <laughs> hey, everybody. We got a lady in the housewares here who's looking for a fly swatter. She must have flies in her disgusting house. And I could walk around till I find it. But guess what? Limited amount of leg walkage for per day. And if I'm walking around looking everywhere, I'm going to run out of leg walkage. And could ride a scooter. Sometimes those scooters uh, actually go in negative speed. They, they go slower than um, a turtle. And turtles are pretty slow. So let's say you take a turtle speed subtract half of that that's the scooters at walmart and you're just like and it's embarrassing and you know what's even more embarrassing than riding at the speed of a half turtle is when you have to back up and it goes beep 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 and you're like everyone look at me check it out i am riding a scooter (laughs) No one cares, though. That's the thing. Nobody even cares. I don't care. Nobody cares. I'm getting a fly swatter. I'm getting a fly swatter. Okay? And I'm getting out of here, and I love y'all. Thanks so much for coming. Goodbye. Whoa, wrong song. Fly swatter. Do you have one? Where'd you get it? It's a family heirloom. Bye, everybody.